Howdy friends and foes, my name is Kat. I'm an artist, teacher, and I despise the sound of pouring hot water. And you're watching the series where I talk about current art trends and forecast a positive art future. Today, we are looking at the almost forgotten art form of lithophanes and how 3D printing brought it back from near extinction. Yay, a happy story. So to be honest, I never really gave 3D printing that much thought, even when it was rising in popularity in the early 2010s. I figured it was neat, but not something that I would ever utilize because it's just not my skill set. That was up until recently when I started seeing a lot of really interesting applications for it in art and in art making tools. I guess I am a little late to the party, but like I always say, it's always better to be late than straight. When I started becoming interested in 3D printing, I browsed through free platforms like Thingiverse for art tools and art related designs that I could just download and print for free. While I was doing this browsing, I kept coming across these things called lithophanes and I had never heard of them before. It did sound sort of familiar because in college I minored in printmaking and I specifically did a process called lithographs where you make prints from limestone. So I kind of knew generally that litho had to do something with stones and I knew that fane had something to do with light or windows or glass or something like that, but I couldn't really figure out what they were necessarily just by the name, but I could tell that they were probably old and had to do something with art. It turns out that lithophanes are like one part drawing or photography, one part sculpture, and one part stained glass. In normal ambient light, lithophanes don't really look like much, and it's hard to kind of parse what's going on because it's like an abstracted relief sculpture. There's a, there's a three dimensionality to it, but, the magic happens when you end up shining a light behind it. This is a bad example. Cut to the B-roll. And the image sort of just appears from this translucent material like magic. That's because the areas that you want to be lightest have the uh, thinnest amount of material and vice versa. The areas that you want to be the darkest have the largest buildup of material. So it's kind of like counterintuitive when you are looking at it in ambient light and it reverses and flips when you backlight it. Once I figured out what lithophanes were, I was very curious about the history of them, mostly because I'm a loser, but also because like I said, it sounded old, right? It had something to do with stones. So I was pretty sure it existed before 3D printing. And that's when I discovered the really interesting and almost forgotten history of it and I knew I had to make a video about it. So let's talk about the origins of lithophanes and how 3D printing brought it back. The precursor to lithophanes, like a lot of things, originated in China. In the Song Dynasty between 960 BCE and about 1300 BCE, they developed a porcelain technique called Qingbai ware. This was thin, sometimes semi-translucent, porcelain that was slightly off-white with maybe a little bit of a green tinge to it and would have relief sculptures carved right into it. While not necessarily a true lithophane in the sense that we now use it, this type of thin porcelain with sort of a sculptural element to it would be used by Europeans much later on. And historians can't exactly track when and where the origins of using light to display an image on porcelain began, but the first sort of evidence is in Europe in the early 1800s. These lithophane plaques that the Europeans developed in the 1820s were not just one-of-a-kind images. They were actually reproducible. And the original illustration that was used for the lithophanes was carved into wax that was backlit because Wax was a malleable surface that behaved similarly when lit up, very much like porcelain. A plaster or a metal cast was then made from that wax so that porcelain could be poured into the mold repeatedly and fired in a kiln so you could reproduce the same image. 
it cannot be overstated how technically challenging this process is, even in modern day. You have to have so many different forms of proficiency in techniques across sculpture, drawing, ceramics. So many things can go wrong and porcelain is notoriously finicky anyway. So this was a very, very challenging process. The plaque lithophanes that were created from this porcelain were then often used as decor in people's homes. They were either hung in a window to have light shining through them, they were put in front of a fireplace, or they were used as sort of lampshades. There were also a very interesting amount of extremely horny and explicit lithophanes, and I don't know why. <laughs> um, obviously I can't show you them, but if you google it, you will come across some pretty rowdy fucking drawings from the 1800s. My guess is that like it's almost like hidden in plain sight because it's not really legible in normal lighting situations. You would have to backlight it, so it's almost like secret Playboy magazines of the 1800s. It's really bizarre, but um, people just love boning and, and drawing people boning. So that much has been true throughout time. <laughs> this sort of trend of lithophanes, while not like super popular, definitely peaked in the 1800s and was pretty much obsolete by the 20th century. This makes a lot of sense because if you look at what was happening with photography at this time, Kodak had just come out with the first Browning camera and film negative photography was becoming very accessible to the public. People didn't have to go to painters or even professional photographers to have images of their loved ones savable forever. They could just take it with their own cameras. I imagine that this is one of the reasons why in the West, Lithophanes kind of faded out around the turn of the 20th century and nobody was really making them anymore. There were still some lithophanes being made in Japan in the 20th century and that was called dragonware and those came in the form of tea sets. Online sources credit dragonware as starting at a similar point that uh, it did in Europe. So it's hard to tell which came first or if they came up at the same time or which one was influenced by which, but it was different in that it was pretty much exclusively like teacups and things like that and not necessarily plaques. They would often have a portrait relief in the bottom of the cup so that I imagine when you were finished drinking your tea, you could hold it up to the light and see the portrait or if you set it on a tea warmer that was lit by a candle, you could see it that way. These were quite popular in the 1930s and 40s during the American occupation of Japan, and they mostly made them to sell to stupid white people as like novelty items to bring back to America. But after World War II, until the 21st century, people just didn't make lithophanes. It, they faded out into complete obscurity with just a couple artists here and there making them and keeping the craft alive. Lithophanes started making a comeback when in the mid 2000s, there became the first merging of modern technology in lithophanes through CNC machining, which CNC machining is basically a uh, computer controlled machine that carves out a design from a material. And this allowed photolithophanes to be created for the first time ever. It no longer required a wide range of fine art skills and a ceramic studio. However, CNC machines are really big, very expensive, the software was pricey, so all of it was quite inaccessible to the average person, so it didn't grow extremely widespread in popularity yet. But CNC machining did lay the foundation for the resurgence of lithophanes when 3D printing started becoming a lot more accessible and affordable 
in the 2010s. I can't seem to trace exactly who the first person was to create the first 3D printed lithophane, but it seems like people started making them somewhere around 2010, but it could have been before that also. 3D printing and lithophanes are actually kind of a great match for each other because the basic FDM filament that's used in a lot of the lower end 3D printers actually acts a lot like porcelain when built up at the right thickness. So this opened up the possibility for pretty much anybody with a 3D printer to be able to create lithophanes. And it would have a pretty similar effect to a traditional lithophane that started almost 200 years earlier. Once it caught on through Reddit and Thinkingverse, lithophanes came back from obscurity and tons of people started making them again. And not only that, but new ideas and a wealth of different designs came from this too. And you could argue that this made lithophanes less of a fine art and more of a craft, which is a fake distinction anyway. But I would argue that it kind of revolutionized it and pushed the medium further. And it breathed new life into this weird and kind of primitive trickery of the light. There are now plenty of free and very easy to use online tools to make lithophanes from. And one site that I used even allows for the ability to add color pretty simply, which was never possible before. Except of course, if you hand painted the material. So I knew I had to make one of these, mostly because I wanted to see what would happen if you made a lithophane from a painting. And I made one from a Polaroid just because I wanted to. I also wanted to see if it would like resemble the real thing at all, or if it would have like its own interesting effect or if it looked like shit. So I enlisted the help of somebody who knew what they were doing with a 3D printer. Caleb Kraft, who creates 3D printed video game peripherals to help people with physical disabilities play games easier, was kind enough to lend his services and 3D printer to help me make some lithophanes. And he recorded the process. I'm very grateful because I don't think I should be allowed near a 3D printer. Even like a pencil sharpener is a little bit iffy for me because I'm extremely accident prone. And so with this help, I was able to create these two lithophanes and they came out really cool and I am very enamored with them. I created the files for these lithophanes on itslitho.com and it was really easy and probably took me only like five or 10 minutes. It sounds like a sponsor, it's not a sponsor. Also, if you're wondering how the color portion of this was done, it's actually just a piece of printer paper with a uh, file that the uh, tool provides and you literally just tape it on the back using some clear tape. And it takes these weird colors and accounts for the material of the filament to create something that's pretty close to what the original um, pieces look like. Even though this is kind of viewed more as crafty, like I said, uh, which is really just a way of historically discounting the work of women. I could also see it being used in more of a fine art context. Like if you framed these in a sort of really nice way with a built-in backlight and things like that, I think they could turn out really nice. And I think they would totally be like gallery appropriate, whatever the fuck that means. And I think especially coming off my last video talking about post-crypto art, this is kind of like a breath of fresh air because it's kind of the opposite in a lot of ways, which I brought up briefly in the post crypto video in that nobody's really trying to make like money off of this. They're just doing it for their own personal enjoyment and it's very accessible and people share ideas and share images and develop tools for free just so people can create something physical that they can enjoy in their homes. It's just like the most, it's most like straightforward artistic enjoyment using modern technology. And I just think that's really great. There was some irony that dawned on me during this process. And that is, we are now using the most advanced, newest technology 
of digital photography and 3D printing and computer software to create a viewing experience that faded into obscurity because of the advancement of technology. Like lithophanes became antiquated and obsolete because of the advancements in photography. And now we are using lithophanes to view that technology that initially almost caused it to be extinct. Does that make any sense? Am I crazy? Don't answer that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this more lighthearted, uh, wholesome video. I know that I would get more views if I talked about NFTs, but I think my brain would simply melt if I did. So thank you for watching this video and a special thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. I objectively love you more. If you'd like to support me and the channel, you can head over to Patreon and become a patron where I post exclusive content and videos. And you even get your name in the credits of each video. I have a couple more videos in the pipeline. One that I'm really excited about, about the Game Boy camera um, and the resurgence of popularity in it. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you know that I have become deeply obsessed with the Game Boy camera and I'm now making a Game Boy game about the Game Boy camera, um, which is new and exciting. So I'm gonna be making a video all about that and I'm really excited and I want to make it right now, but I have to actually finish my game first, or at least I should, before I talk about the whole, the whole circle of it. So stay tuned for that and until next time, do an art. Right then, what's all this? It's piss.